Should I go ahead and start? Okay. All right. Welcome back. All right. So today uh, we are going to focus. Uh, it's working. Okay. Today we're going to focus on gray water harvesting. So what is gray water? So that is the water from our household drains, but not all the drains, just some of them. It's the water from our bathroom sink, our clothes washing machine, uh, our shower and bathtub. Uh, it is not the water from our toilet. That's black water because of all the uh, organic matter. Uh, and it is not dishwashing water. Uh, sorry, uh, dishwashing machine water. Okay. Um, that is also because there's more organic matter. There's the, the oil or the grease and the food particles on the plates. But the most difficult thing about dishwasher machine water is the soap. All the soaps are really bad for dishwashers, the mechanical dishwashers. Um, they have lots of salt and caustic substances. And perhaps, I don't know if in Italy you had these commercials, but when, uh, when I was a kid, there were commercials that said if you had white spots on your glasses, you were social scum. Okay. Okay. So uh, everyone wants to buy soaps that get rid of the spots, but it's horrible soap for the environment. Okay. All right. Uh, now, a kitchen sink water. Many uh, health agencies consider that to be black water as well because it has uh, lots of organic matter in it. And there is salmonella coming out of the drain from, a, from kitchen sink water. But you can harvest kitchen sink water like you harvest gray water. It's, it's possible. I do it. Okay? But the law might not allow it. Okay? In your area. Okay? The human law might not allow it. But the natural law allows it. Okay? Um, Another thing is uh, we want to avoid water from uh, water softeners. Okay. Sometimes if you have hard water, yeah. Because most water softeners use sodium chloride to soften the water. They use salt to soften the water. And you don't want that salt going out into your landscape. It's really bad for the soil and the plants. It's not great, but it's OK to use a softener with potassium chloride. That's OK. It's not, great. it's not good for your plants, but it won't kill your plants. OK? Um, all right. So toilet, dishwasher, and sometimes kitchen sink are black water. Bathtub, shower, uh, washing machine, bathroom sink, those are gray water. 
water softener water or water from a uh, water filter, like a reverse osmosis water filter, that's clear water. Okay? Because you didn't put anything into the water. All right? Uh, if you use a reverse osmosis water filter, the backwash or the flush water from the filter will be higher in salt than the water it filters because it's filtering out the salt. So that's okay, but not great. Right. Um, you want to water salt-tolerant plants with your reverse osmosis flush water. How do you know what plant is salt tolerant? Well, many times these plants have salt in the name, like salt bush or salt cedar. Yeah, so atroplex, canensis, or other atroplex, that's a salt bush. Yeah, that's definitely one. Yeah. And you can make salsa with salicornia. They make they do it in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it's picante. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Any questions on what gray water is? Okay. So then, uh, what is the most dangerous thing we can do with gray water? Drink it. Okay, drink it. <clears throat> what else? So, so, to, so, just to, so it's uh, to let the gray water sit in, a, in one place? Yeah, okay. Oh, I forgot. Dicevo che se lasciamo le, le sostanze, cioè l'acqua con la sostanza organica ferma, eh, poi la sostanza organica può crescere e moltiplicarsi, quindi essere dannosa, sviluppare, non so, batteri, virus, qualcosa. Yeah, so, um, actually that in my opinion, is the most dangerous thing we can do with gray water. Because if we let it sit in a tank, it will turn septic. It will become black water. Okay? Because all the organic matter in that gray water, maybe dead skin or whatever, uh, it will feed the bacteria and organisms we do not want, like salmonella, and their populations will increase. Okay? So, uh, um, one way we can turn black, uh, we can turn gray water into black water is by letting it sit. Okay? Another way we can turn gray water into black water is by mixing it with black water. Okay? Black water is much more difficult to treat. Okay? So I don't think we should combine our sink drain pipes, our shower drain pipes, with the toilet. We should keep it separate. Okay. Um, and uh, one thing in the conventional uh, building codes, and 
is they unfortunately make uh, the discharge of gray water more dangerous. Okay. Because many of the building codes say you must treat gray water like black water. And so you must put the gray water into a tank, like a septic tank, before it goes to the landscape and the soil. So that practice is turning gray water into black water. And I hate it. <laughs> OK. Thankfully, the laws are starting to change in some areas. So in my state of Arizona, uh, it used to be illegal to harvest gray water. Okay. But now it is legal. It's fine to do it. How did the law change? Well, hundreds of thousands of people harvested their gray water when it was illegal. Okay? And so the state became very concerned. These people would not obey the law. They would just harvest the gray water anyway. So the state was being ineffective they were not giving guidance to the people on good practice because no one would listen. Their guidance was too difficult to achieve. So uh, a number of researchers from the universities did studies on these illegal systems. And they wanted to see, was there any real health risk? And they found there was no problem. As long as people followed common sense practices. For example, they, as long as they did not put the gray water in a tank. As long as they did not put the gray water um, uh, into a pit where it would sit and get stinky. OK? Um, so uh, with these studies, uh, they worked with the health department to create 13 common sense guidelines. And uh, now, if you follow those common sense guidelines, there's no inspection, there's no fee or cost, and it's an automatic free permit. OK? So now it's very easy for the people to listen to the guidance from the health department. And it's easy to practice because now you don't need to put gray water in a tank. You can do it like I will show you in a moment. <laughs> um, uh, and if you're interested in these studies and the gray water uh, guidelines, you can go to the gray water harvesting page of my website, and I, I link to those. I don't have, uh, don't have that information in Italian yet, but there is some information in Spanish. OK, so. Maybe he's your English. Yeah, maybe he's your English. OK. Um, all right. Uh, so. I will talk about two ways of doing things in this talk. 
One way will be how do you safely harvest gray water in a way that obeys natural law, the law of nature. Okay. And I will also talk about how you can or cannot harvest gray water by obeying human laws, laws that people wrote. Because, as I was just explaining, it used to be in my state that human laws said you could not harvest gray water. But the natural law said it was no problem, as long as you did it right. Okay. Okay. Um, oh. Hai parlato di due, come dire, due modi di recuperare le acque grigie, giusto? Ho detto bene? Uno per le piante, uno con il fine di usarlo per le piante e l'altro non ho capito. Oh, just now? Yeah, no. Uh, no, I was... No, I was just talking about natural law and human law. So there, there, are, there are rules that nature says we must follow, and then there are rules that people say we must follow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's talk about some of the potential of gray water harvesting. So this graph shows you how a typical person in my city consumes drinking water. Okay? So all, most of the water, the drinking water that they consume, they put into the landscape to irrigate plants. Okay? This is crazy because we have spent all kinds of resources purifying the water so you can drink it and delivering it to your home in a quality that you can drink, but we put it directly into the dirt. What? Okay. And then, uh, okay, I will come to this later today. Then this much, about 14% of the drinking water, we, we shit in every day. <laughs> okay. Because by law, we have to put drinking water in our toilet. Crazy. Okay. But let's look at the washing machine, the faucets, and the shower. That is most of this use. So if we could send this water to the landscape instead of the sewer, we could dramatically reduce our drinking water consumption. Okay. All right. uh, and when we harvest gray water, it's very important we use the correct soaps and the correct uh, cleaning products. So, unfortunately, this slide is looking dark here. But on the left is a very healthy tomato plant that was irrigated with gray water with a good soap that a, that a friend of mine invented to be plant food. Okay. And this is the control tomato plant that only gets irrigation water with fertilizer. It's doing very well. And this almost dead tomato plant is irrigated with gray water and a very common uh, laundry detergent. Uh, the brand is Tide. Okay. It's full of salt. So it's, ki it's killing the tomato plant. 
So uh, you want to avoid, OK, first, when you are looking at your soaps, your shampoo, your uh, cleaning products, you must look at the ingredients, not the label. Okay. The label is lies. Okay. It's just propaganda. Okay. Never trust it. Because all the time I find soaps that say they are great for the environment. They're great for gray water. Many are not. They're, they're horrible. Because when I turn the bottle over and I read the ingredients, I see they are full of chlorine or boron or salt or other sodium uh, products. Uh, so avoid chlorine, avoid salt or sodium, avoid boron. And there, there are other things you want to avoid. Boron. So plants need some boron, but only very, very small amount. And there's too much in the soaps that have boron. So I have much more information on the gray water harvesting page of my website. I have lots of information in English and Spanish on good products and bad products. Yeah. Do you have the recipe for that soap your friend makes? Che uh, ricette per col sapone che fa il tuo amico? I don't have his recipe, no. Uh, Yeah. Okay. So. Can I ask Cosa ne pensi del sale che faccio, cioè nel detersivo che uso per i piatti? È composto da limone, sale e aceto. Uh, I don't like that second ingredient. Salt. <laughs> yeah. Come possiamo sostituire il sale con cosa? What can we substitute? With what can we substitute Just use the lemon and the vinegar and you're great. Ah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, most Powder soaps and detergents are very high in salt. So when you get a, a box of laundry detergent, uh, you don't need all that material in there. Most of the material in the box is filler. It's not soap. It's just stuff that makes you think you're getting more for your money. Yeah. And it's mostly salt. Okay. Um, so liquid soaps are usually much better than powder soaps. Um, Do you want the mic? Microphone? Il sapone in polvere che usi per la lavatrice o in generale, invece gli altri liquidi sono migliori. Okay. Okay, and then when you use the bar soaps, like the traditional olive oil soap, okay, it's great that you can make it, but when you make it with uh, ash or lime or caustic lye, That's when you introduce the salt, okay? And that's not, not so good, okay? Is there another way to make without 
these ingredients. C'è un'altra maniera per fare il sapone senza utilizzare degli ingredienti che abbiano sale? So I, I have not tried myself, but as I understand it, you can use uh, glycerin and other products instead. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. And any other questions on that? Ah, and if, if... Um, la cenere, la soda caustica e il, um, il lai, che sarebbe... No, no, no lai, quello è la, limone o lemon. E, e lai è, è soda caustica. Sì, yeah, soda, ca soda caustica. Is this, and what is... Uh, ok, That's lie. I translated on my page, I got confused. La soda caustica e la cenere non sono buone nel sapone perché contengono il sale. Purtroppo l'unico altro modo per fare il sapone è con la glicerina, invece della la cenere o la soda caustica. Il bicarbonato di sodio. Baking soda è anche sale. Baking soda is bad. No. Oh, per il sapone? Coffee grounds for, watch, per i piatti. Coffee grounds for wash, uh, washing dishes and things? Wow, I've never heard of that, but it should be no problem. How do you do that? You can just a Like a sponge of coffee grounds? Huh. Ah, I have to try it. Nice. To scour it. He scrubs it. Okay. I like that. It wakes your plates up. Okay. If you want bleach to get your clothes very white or to disinfect something like your sink, Do not use chlorinated bleach or chlorine bleach. That's not good for your plants. But hydrogen peroxide bleach, that's good. Okay? So, so uh, when gray water harvesting was illegal, that was due in part to many health agencies thinking that if people harvested their gray water, they were at risk of hurting their health. Okay. But we are finding that if we give people the correct information, They improve their health when they start harvesting gray water. Because many of the same products that are harmful to the soil and to plants are also harmful to us and our skin. So when people change what soaps and cleaners they use so that they're not toxic, their health improves. And so does the health of their soil plants. Because the wonderful thing about gray water harvesting is it reconnects us with where things go. In, in English we have an expression that when we, that we throw away our garbage or we throw away our waste. But there's no such thing as a way. <laughs> We live on a planet. So the waste is always here. <laughs> And okay. So uh, there is no away, that part? Because it, there is no way, non, non esiste via perché rimane tutto sul pianeta, because it all remains on the planet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we, 
gray water harvesting reconnects you with the cycle of all our resources. And it enables us to transform a waste into a resource. Okay. Because we are able to reuse it again. And it's easier to do this if we reduce or eliminate the toxic elements, like the soaps, in the first place. Okay. Okay? So now um, I want to show you uh, this graph. So at the top is telling you the number of beneficial soil microorganisms for each gram of soil. Okay. And then on this side of the graph, it's telling you depth of soil. So in the top uh, few centimeters of the soil, we have over 100 million beneficial soil microorganisms just for a little gram of soil. Okay. These are incredible life forms that transform many things that are dangerous to us to things that are a benefit to us. They can tra help transform salmonella and other things, uh, fecal matter, into soil. So, but if we get to one meter below the surface, we drop from a hundred million beneficial microorganisms to only a thousand. Okay? Well, and rock, yeah. Here, here maybe you have four beneficial microorganisms. <laughs> Okay, um, so this is why it's so good the laws are changing and now starting to allow the discharge of gray water in the top surface of the soil. Okay, we, we don't want to discharge our gray water like you discharge your septic tank water, which is very low. It, because you, you don't take advantage of these great life forms, okay? And think, think about it. Okay, think about life in the soil. Where are the roots? Where are most of the roots? They're in the top. And if the whole point of this practice is to irrigate our plants, then why put the gray water deep in the soil? If we put it deep into the soil, it will contaminate our well water or our groundwater. It's ridiculous. Okay. Okay. So uh, here is uh, an example of a good alternative, safe soap that works for your plants. Uh, this photograph was taken in uh, Palestine uh, where due to the water system and who controls it, uh, they sometimes only get uh, three days and even as little as three hours of water in a summer, drinking water in a summer, delivered to them. So they have to do everything they can to conserve water. So they uh, reuse their gray water and they make their own soap. It's just lemons. <laughs> so they soak the, lemon, or the plates in lemon water and then scrub it, rinse it, Okay, and when they're done, this water is great for the plants. You can also uh, 
look at your local plant names and uh, if they have the word soap in them, they are probably a natural soap plant. So in my area, we have the soap berry tree and the fruits you can you rub in water and it's... Le noci di saponina, se qualcuno... Le noci di saponina. Yeah, because it ha these plants are high in saponins. Le vendono nei negozi di commercio eco, le chiamano noci di saponina, qualcosa del genere. Ma anche altre piante dice con nome di saponina, la pianta. Qui. C'è la saponaria. C'è la saponaria. C'è la saponaria. So these plants, when you rub them in water, make suds, bubbles. Okay? And... Uh, So, look to your local plant lists. Find your soap plants. And you can grow a laundry or hand washing guild next to your laundry machine or next to your sink. So, just grab some of the plants, you're good. Okay. Yep. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, mi chiedevo. Cosa potesse provocare a questi batteri il film di olio che si deposita sul suolo? I wonder if the film of uh, oil on the top of the water, if this is a problem for the mm. bacteria. Great, yes. So the, uh, the oil, uh, from olive oil, can, is an issue, but what's worse or what's more difficult than olive oil is... Uh, fats from animals and so uh, the best practice so the best practice when you are washing your dishes is to uh, scrape the plate of all its fat and oil and organic matter and put it into a compost bin next to the sink. And then, then it's much easier to use. But I know that these um, lipidic substances are also dangerous for compost, the, bact uh, the bacteria in compost. Mm. I haven't. Le, le, le sostanze grasse comunque sono nocive per i batteri del compost. Well, uh, I've, I've had no problem with my compost. Yeah. And if, if maybe it's too much, send it through your chickens before it goes to the compost. Okay. Yeah, or pigs, yeah. All right. Okay. So now, uh, now I'm going to uh, show you different gray water harvesting systems. And I'm going to start with the simplest and go to more complex. And I am going to focus on uh, gravity fed gray water systems, meaning that I use gravity to move the gray water to the plants. No pumps, okay, no tanks. Um, I will show you one pump system, but no tank systems, all right? Um, because if the pump breaks, your gray water system breaks. Gravity does not break. And if gravity does break, don't worry, because you will be dead. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you will float off into space. Okay. Uh, and uh, these systems I will show you are not the only gray water systems. They're just my favorites. Okay. But... Um, You can, uh, you can create your own, too. Okay. 
So first, uh, if it is illegal to harvest gray water where you live, set up an outdoor shower. It's just the hose over a branch of a tree, you shower under it. Because there is no drain, you just collect the water in the soil, it's legal. There's no building code for this. Okay. And it might not be enjoyable in winter, but in summer it's great. And that's when your plants need the water. And uh, so just a nice mulched basin below the feet. Okay. The next level in complexity has a pipe <laughs> from the bathtub to the citrus tree, okay. the orange tree, or the lemon tree. And you keep a continuous 2% drop in the pipe. It's always moving downhill. This is very important. Okay? So at minimum, it must drop 2 centimeters for every meter. Okay? It can be steeper, but, no, no, uh, but not, not more shallow. If it's level, water will, or worse, if it goes uphill, you will have gray water in your pipe all the time, and it will turn into black water. It will start to stink. So get it directly to the soil, where the soil microorganisms will use that gray water, and uh, no problem. Okay. For your kitchen sink or other sinks, you can have a tub in the sink that collects the water. Okay. Um, and uh, this works great you, as long as you remember to put the tub of water into the plantings. But do not put that water on the plant if you're going to eat parts of the plant. Put it on the soil because this kitchen sink water has salmonella in it, okay? And, and other things you don't want on, your, on what you eat, okay? So put it on the soil. Um, the, this is very inexpensive to put in, it's very easy, but it's not the most convenient system to use because you have to remember to dump the water. And I and my brother are very lazy. So when we had this system, we would wait until the water was at the very top before we dumped it. And sometimes we would go on a camping trip for a few days and we forgot to dump the water. So we would come home and whew, it stunk, okay? Because the water had been sitting for so long and turning into black water. So that's the, what you need to be aware of. For when you wash dishes, yeah. Perché prima abbiamo detto che invece si poteva buttare l'acqua con, con, per il lavaggio dei piatti. Sì, nel... Ma questo invece... Questa la, si... la prende, la butta direttamente nel terreno, ah, sì. ma non sopra la frutta, le pomodori, ah, non, so. okay. non sopra la parte che mangi, okay. no, le foglie delle verdure. Una cosa non ho capito, uh, quando ho fatto vedere l'immagine della doccia, eh, come fa a far andare l'acqua direttamente, cioè se non la deposita nella cisterna? No, credo che... Sì, però come... Quando si fa... 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 Qu
shower. That was water, uh, that was drinking water, right? That's yes. not gray water. Quella non era acqua grigia con cui facevano doccia, quella era acqua potabile. Acqua dal pozzo o non necessariamente potabile. Parlava dello smaltimento diretto di quell'acqua per innaffiare. So, when I talk about gray water harvesting, I'm only using the gray water to irrigate plants, not to wash me with or my dishes. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, so another system I call the bucket and chuck it, okay? So you can uh, put a bucket under the sink, collect the water, and then when it's full, dump it. Mm, difficult to sell, but... Yeah. It, it's usually very difficult. It's not, it's not, uh, you can't get a permit for this, okay? Kind of septic. Yeah. But um, it has higher volume than a tub. But it has this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so there, you again. You have to remember to dump it, and you have to remember to put the bucket back. Okay. So this is a way you can stop using drinking water to flush your toilet. You, can you see that? There is a bucket in the shower. When you're waiting for the hot water to get hot, you fill the bucket. And when you shower, you stand over the bucket. So the water hits your body and goes in the bucket and put your hair in there, okay? And then you flush with the gray water, not drinking water. And you pour the water in the bowl, not the tank. Do it nice and steady, not too fast, so nothing jumps out. Okay. It helps if you do it from a little bit higher rather than lower. It's better to do it from the alto than from the basso, says he. Perché la forza aiuta a mandare giù tutto. The force. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And, uh, yeah, good enough. Okay. Uh, if you have a washing machine, uh, next to the washing machine is a pipe for the sewer. But you can take the drain hose from the washing machine and you, could, you can put it into a tank that immediately starts to drain the water through a hose. The only reason for this tank is the garden hose is a smaller diameter than the drain hose. And if you connected this to that, water would back up in the, in the hose and you would burn out the pump in your washing machine, okay? Because too much surface friction on too small a diameter hose. So this is just a surge tank. So the washing machine water starts to fill the tank, and then the water immediately starts to drain. So 20 minutes or less after the washing machine stops running, all the water drains out. Okay. Basin. Um, do you also, I, I use this system where I put water into a big basin, then I use it to flush the toilet. Sometimes it remains there for three or four days. I don't know if that's a problem. 
Io uso questo sistema, ma mando l'acqua in una lavanda, in una vasca, in una vasca e poi lo uso per il DC. Per, um, ma a volte rimane lì per 3 o 4 giorni prima di finirlo. Um, non so se questo è un problema. So I would say your biggest risk is that you have maybe open water for three days and that's enough time for a mosquito egg to go to a mosquito adult. So this is indoors, so that shouldn't happen. E dentro casa con la rete anti zanzara, quindi non dovrebbe succedere zanzara dentro. Okay, so if you don't have mosquitoes, you're probably okay. But if uh, you, um, the other thing you want to watch is do, does it start to smell? Okay. If you're not noticing the smell, you're probably okay. It's not turning to black water. Eh, non ho capito la differenza tra il tubo più largo e il tubo più, più stretto. E poi volevo capire, cioè, quando l'acqua della lavatrice è troppo calda, tipo quando facciamo il lavaggio a 90 gradi. He wasn't clear on the concept of the larger tube and the smaller hose, the larger hose. And also he said, what if we um, uh, use very high temperature water to do our laundry? And she said, you, you shouldn't. Yeah. Um, it's okay, the hot water. Because it will, the soil will quickly uh, drop the temperature. So you, you will burn the roots at the, uh, where the water first goes into the soil, but then it will diffuse. And the matter of the, you didn't understand the large holes in the Okay. So um, if, uh, how do I explain this? So uh, if you, okay, so if I have a hose like this and I've, <laughs> I'm blowing water through, everything's fine, <laughs> no problem. But then if I go from a big one to a small one, now, <laughs> okay, so you see the pressure in my face? <laughs> the same problem is for the pump in the washing machine. It is. This, this is smaller. A typical garden hose is smaller than the drain hose that comes out of the machine. Why does it not cause the backup? Because of this tank. This whole tank would have to fill before there would be any pressure on the machine. And this tank is a larger capacity than all the water in the washing machine. So no problem. E comunque ha detto che in 45 minuti dopo la fine del lavaggio il bidone si è già svuotato, quindi se pur, cioè pur volendo fare una lavatrice successiva comunque c'è il tempo perché si svuoti, non succede mai questa cosa della pressione che poi va a premere. Now you can avoid this whole tank if this hose is the same diameter or bigger than that. Yeah. Yeah. That if you never constrict. Puoi evitare l'uso del della cisterna del bidone del coso insomma. se hai un unico tubo e non viene mai eh, non è mai più stretto in un punto un tubo continuo a continuous tube yeah you send the tube all the way out to the lawn or yard yeah. si sì, prolunghi il tubo fino al terreno so why do you have the tank because this allora gli ho chiesto perché c'hai questo bidone? Because it's hard and expensive to get a big diameter tube. 
Ah, perché costa molto di più un tubo, una tubazione di diametro largo, lungo fino al terreno, che farne uno piccolo e poi l'altro più stretto. Okay. Now there's one other risk with this system, and that is your hose could get kinked in the yard. Now no water moves. So for, for that reason, uh, a rigid pipe is better. Okay. And one other thing about this tank, don't put it on the ground. You have to raise it so water comes out with gravity. Okay, so now a different system. <coughs> no tank. Here is my washing machine. Here is the uh, pipe for the sewer. But I don't want to use that pipe. I want my gray water to go to the landscape. So I have three additional pipes I put next to the washing machine, each labeled with the tree that it irrigates, apple, fig, citrus. And every time I do a load of wash, I take the drain hose and I stick it in a different pipe. So the water with every different load of wash goes to a different fruit tree in the landscape. And if I ever wash something with toxic soap, like chlorinated bleach, I send it to the sewer and I contaminate the community system, not my private system. Okay? And this is why under sewer, in parentheses, I put local river or sea or bay. This is to remind me that there is no away. If I use something toxic, it will come back to me in the form of my food, my water, or my children. Okay, all right, all right, uh, and uh, the pipes outlet about this high above a mulched basin because I don't want to clog the pipe with roots. Roots will grow into the pipe if it comes under the straw, under the mulch, okay? And it's very important I have organic mulch in that basin. If it's just bare dirt, I will risk having puddling water, okay? Good? Okay, uh, this is a photograph of the same system. Okay, there are the different gray water pipes and the sewer pipe. Now, it is important if you have this system that when you are not using your sewer pipe, you put a cap over the pipe. Okay, why? Okay. This is because, uh, how do I explain it? On the sewer pipe, here, here you can see the sewer pipe. If, uh, okay. Okay, so anytime you have a sewer pipe, you will have a P-trap. In this P-trap, there is always water.
Okay? There will always be water in the P-trap. And that is so sewer gases never come into your house. That's the purpose of it. Okay? So if I use the gray water pipes almost all the time and only once a year I use the sewer pipe, then this water will evaporate out the vent and I will have no water in here. So there is a chance that sewer gases could come into the house. So this is why I cap the, the sewer drain when I don't use it. And if, uh, if I'm going to use it once I can, and I smell sewer gases, I just pour a little water in and I'm good. Okay? So I tell you this because when I was working with my city officials to make this a legal system, the plumbing inspector said, no way! Sewer gases! So I just said, yeah, put a cap on it. <laughs> no problem. Okay. All right, so uh, this is uh, at some friend's house in their courtyard or plaza. Um, they, there are 19 families living uh, around this courtyard. And they all wanted a nice, uh, efficient washing machine. But none of them could afford it on their own. So they pooled their money together and bought one machine for all 19 families to use. Okay? And they put it outside under the structure where everybody could use it. And then they move their drain hose to a different pipe every time they do wash. But they also have a reverse osmosis water filter. So the flush drain for that is taped to the washing machine drain hose. So every time they move the washing machine drain hose, they move the reverse osmosis water filter drain hose. Okay? And works great. Um, they uh, also have a communal compost system, communal shower behind there, and a communal solar clothes dryer. Okay. So uh, what I love about this system is it acts like a village well and a village laundry together because they all come to do their laundry and to get their water. And before they had this, they would, there would be tension in the community because let's say one person's dogs were barking in the night. And before they did this, you would have to wait for the weekly meeting to talk to your neighbor about their dog. But now, you see your neighbor every day, getting water or doing laundry. So you only have to have one night without sleep, not seven, before you solve the problem. Okay. Uh, they also found that by sharing the resource of the washing machine, they thought, oh, we could share other resources. So it used to be that every household had its own internet connection. Now there's only one internet connection for the whole community and then they route it to everybody. It also used to be that everybody had a copy of Terminator 3.
that movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. Prima ce l'aveva ognuno di loro aveva una copia di questo film. No. Ah, sono tutti uomini. He noticed that it's all men doing laundry. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. But oh wait, let me just finish the the Terminator 3, it's not a very good movie. You you shouldn't have that many copies. So now there is only one copy of the movie for the whole community in their movie room. Ok? Yeah. Eh, non ho capito eh, cosa l'osmosi inversa tratta, quali, che tipo di acque tratta e eh, perché usi poi la si utilizza. L'osmosi inversa. Eh, eh. Chi It's uh, it's for drinking water, and it it, it treats uh, your utility water, the water that comes through the pipes to your house, because our water is uh, uh, salty uh, and very hard, so uh, and it has chlorine in it. The city puts chlorine in it. So people will use that filter to get the chlorine and the fluorine. salt up. Chlorine. Uh, in USA, uh, do you use uh, fluorine? Fluoride? fluoride? Some communities do, but not our community. Is okay. it expensive, uh, the osmosis, uh, reverse osmosis? Yeah, it's expensive. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> Io volevo sapere un po' sociologico. Ma come si sono convinte queste persone? Cosa si sono fumate? Cioè 19 famiglie che, si, che hanno pure dei, dei contrasti tra di loro, si mettono d'accordo per fare una cosa del genere, cioè erano molto povere, non so, c'era qualcosa che li ha motivate? Qual She wanted to know how did the 19 families who were, didn't even get along that well, um, how did they agree on doing something like this? Were, was there a sociological reason? Were they very poor? Um, what made them come together and do this? Okay. Yeah, they were poor-ish. Well, not by world standards, but by American standards. Uh, um, but they, uh, they all chose to live here as to be a community. So they wanted to be a community. So that's where they were coming from. No, are they not like a kidney type? Are they kind of alternative? No. No, they should not so if you get told in the end, they'll get the end. Like co-housing. Like co-housing, yeah. So we... Rather hippie types, very alternative. Perché negli Stati Uniti il co-housing, qui in Italia il co-housing in genere sono persone abbastanza alternative, no? Invece negli Stati Uniti no, non necessariamente, possono essere anche, non so, anziani o persone che insomma vogliono vivere una comunità. Ok, so I've done the same thing at my house because I don't want to use virgin drinking water to irrigate my plants. And so I direct my gray water to my fruit trees. But I did not do enough laundry to keep my fruit trees healthy in the summer. So I went and talked to my neighbors who I thought might want to use my washing machine and I invited them to do so. And they pay 50 cents a load of laundry, which is cheaper than the laundromat. And uh, so now I use their gray water instead of virgin water, and they get to see how to harvest gray water. So they learn. And it's a, it's a way to grow fruit with dirty clothes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the, the, the practice that uh, I'm familiar with from Ireland 
Uh, una cosa che conosco dall'Irlanda è l'uso di questa caraffa, um, this plastic jug, with a filter in it, con un filtro dentro. Um, che for drinking riduce, water. For drinking water, che riduce il contenuto minerale, reduces the mineral content. Uh, they're becoming very popular now in Italy too. It's, it's, a, it's a novelty but you begin to find them in kitchens. Adesso a Milano si usa questa, questa caraffa con un filtro dentro che si cambia ogni tanto. Um, in Dublin I notice now the, wa the tap water is not drinkable. I, I, I don't like the taste of it. But if I pass it through this, it's, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, a Dublino l'acqua del rubinetto non è buono. Um, ma passandolo per questo filtro in questa caraffa di plastica, è buono, sembra buono. Um, cosa dici di questi filtri? Or what do you think of these filters? Uh, they're good, but let's, let's hold off on that conversation until tomorrow, because that's about drinking water. Let's just focus on gray water now, um, just because the limited time for today. So, um, okay, so, uh, here is a photograph from a co-housing development <laughs> where uh, in their laundry room they have three washing machines and on the washing machine they have a map because each washing machine directs its gray water to a different section of the community orchard. So all the trees in red get their water from one, one washing machine. The purple trees get their water from another washing machine. Okay, and so on. So, if you love orange, oranges, you always do your laundry in the machine that irrigates the orange tree. If you love apples, you always use the machine that you wa irrigates the apple tree. Okay. Um, so there's 48 families using this system. Explain this. So then on, Ho di un po questo, cose sono in on each washing machine, they then have uh, a little um, warning or guidance on what you can use or what you should not use. So they say no chlorine bleach, no fabric softener, uh, no, um, no uh, spot removers, your stain removers, unless it's hydrogen peroxide, that's okay. Uh, and they also say no clothes with chemicals on them or grease from working on your car, uh, and so on. And no poopy diapers. Okay, all right. It's good fertilizer, but it's, uh, I'm watch it. Okay. So, um, I'm thinking we should probably take a little break for the translator, or, because it's 11 o'clock now. What's that? Okay, so let's take uh, let's take a more like a 10 minute, 10, 15 minute break, not 20 minutes, because uh, it's great. You guys have a lot of questions, but this is going really slow. So um, I want to try and get some time back. So let's break for about 10 minutes. Okay. Okay, you yeah, guys ready for us to start here? Sure, we can do that, yeah. Oh, just, just before the question, let me do a couple announcements because I keep forgetting this. Okay.
Okay, everybody. Okay. All right. So a couple announcements before we start again. So first, uh, I have one copy left of the, my first book for sale, if anyone wants. 18 euros. Uh, also, and uh, also, um, I have three copies of books that you can get for free online, but unfortunately only in English at the moment. But um, one is Water Harvesting from Dirt Roads. Okay. Another one is Water Harvesting for Erosion Control. And uh, the last one is Green Infrastructure or Water Harvesting Along mm -hmm. Neighborhood Streets. So you can look through these. Um, I'll have them up here, and you can write down the title, and then you can web search the title along with free download, and you'll get to the file. Okay. Uh, and well, you, uh, you just come up and look at. It. So then, uh, the best gray water book is this one. Create an Oasis with Grey Water. Um, so I'll have that up here you can look through. Um, and then the, one of the chapters in my second book expands on the information in this book in, in, in that chapter. OK, so uh, now um, we'll kick back in. And I guess there's some questions to start. No? OK. So uh, usually, we need to retrofit buildings in order to access the gray water. And here, not the clearest of photographs, but there's a washing machine here, just like there. And then there is a drain that goes into the wall for the sewer. But then a plumber put in this gray water drain so water could be sent to the landscape. And this is the drain, the P-trap. That's a vent. You need to have a vent with the P-trap. Otherwise, a siphon effect will drain all the water out of the P-trap. Okay. So you always need a vent. Usually the vent goes through the roof, which is an air break. So water will start to flow out, but the, you will always get some water remaining in the P-trap. Okay. Um, and then the pipe goes in front of uh, this uh, door, which is the access to the plumbing for the bathtub on the other side of the wall. And then the pipe goes outside. I hate the way this was done. It really bothers me. OK? Can you think of why I hate it? OK, it's ugly, but the house was already ugly. <laughs> There was already the hole in the wall and the stains. That was already there. It's the plumbing that bothers me, the way the plumbing was done. The electrical outlet is close to the, uh, too close to the vent, to the tube that exits. Yeah. So that's. Uh, that's an issue. Um, if, if the water backs up, it could go there. So that's, that's one issue. But there's a bigger issue for me. The smell is in the house? No door in the No, no smell. 
It has something to do with this. È il collegamento alla vasca da bagno che sta dietro. Yeah, I can't open it, right? Yeah, that's what bothers me. Okay. So, all right, a plumber did this work. A plumber always needs to access the pipe. But this plumber took away his own access to the bathtub plumbing in the future. I hate that. Because it's, it's not thinking about the future. It's not thinking about others. He was just trying to do the job as quickly as possible. So in my opinion, he is a shit plumber. Okay, and I will not hire him again. All right. Yeah, he's a Blackwater plumber. Okay. Um, so I think it's, uh, yeah, I just think it's important that we, whenever we're doing something, harvesting water, harvesting gray water, that we think about the bigger picture and uh, not just in the present, but also the future. Okay. To do retrofits, we oftentimes need to go through walls. Here in Italy, many of the old buildings are made of stone. That's hard drilling, but it's possible. So uh, you can get a, a hammer drill um, or a concrete stone boring drill. It's, it's possible. All right. Um, the main thing is, if you are wondering what is accessible in terms of gray water, if you have a sink, a washing machine, a shower that is against an exterior wall, then in my opinion, you can probably access that gray water. But if the... Uh, washing machine or bathtub is in the middle of the house and you have concrete or stone floors, it's probably not accessible. It's too much drilling and jackhammering. So if you are designing a new home or retrofitting an existing home, try to always put your uh, gray water sources against an exterior wall for easy access, okay? And to access that water, we can <coughs> drill a hole and then we can send the water directly to a mulch basin in the landscape or we can put in a three-way valve that lets us send the gray water to the landscape or to the sewer. So let's say you, most of the time, you use the right soap. But one day a year, you like to take a bubble bath. And the bubble stuff is full of salt. So you want to put that to the sewer. Okay? And you have the option to do both. So we want a level bottomed basin for even infiltration, mulch, so the gray water is beneath the surface of the mulch. And for our vegetation, our living pumps, we want at least one perennial plant to be the, the core planting, the foundation planting. Because a perennial is always there. It will always be working for you. Whereas your vegetables, your annual plants, they die after the season. So you don't want your gray water system dependent on annuals. Because at the end of the season, you won't have plants using the water. But you can plant annuals around the perennial plant. 
So in the summer months, they can use that water. But the perennial is always at the core. And with the gray water, you don't want the gray water to ever touch the part of the plant that you eat. Okay, so um, here we have the artichoke. The artichokes are up here, not on the ground, so no problem. You can do a tomato plant on a trellis, that's no problem. But if the tomato plant is growing on the ground and the tomatoes touch the gray water, not good. Um, and I do not plant potatoes, garlic, or onions with gray water because they will be touching the gray water in the soil. Okay. And I don't irrigate salad greens uh, with gray water either because the greens are too close to the water. But kale and chard that grows very vertical and tall, that's okay. Okay, so I think it's very important that we design our rainwater harvesting systems, our sun harvesting systems, and our gray water harvesting systems so they are as convenient as possible to use. Because we maybe all like to do the right thing, but if it's hard, we will probably do the wrong easy thing instead. Because humans love convenience, okay? We are a lazy animal. Uh, so, um, there is a new law in my city that says all new homes and all retro new retrofits of existing homes must put a gray water harvesting stub out in the house when they build it. What is a stub out? <laughs> First, I will tell you what a stub out is not. It's not the pipe going to the sewer. What it is, is a section of pipe that is put in the wall and or floor that's sitting there. It's not connected to anything. But if you want to send your gray water outside, you just remove the access hatch attach this pipe to your gray water flow with a three-way valve and then connect this pipe out to the landscape oh, to the landscape and you're good okay this this way the homeowner does not need to jackhammer the floor or cut through the wall to get the water out okay um, and uh, also, what I think is important is that when possible, put, put the three-way valve in the same room where people access, or sorry, where people make, where people send the gray water down the drain. Be um, because if you shower on a cold winter night when it's raining, and your, uh, your partner just showered before you with horrible soap and they sent everything to the sewer and now you're going to use good soap and you want to send it to the landscape but you have to go outside to turn the valve because that's where the valve is, you won't do it. <laughs> okay, all right. But if the valve is inside where it's comfortable, you will do it. Any questions? Okay. So um, 
Here's an example of where you can see the valve. If you don't want to see it, but you want it accessible, you can put it in the cabinet. This is inside a cabinet. And I label the direction of the water and where, which way the valve is going. Because the valve is no good if you don't know which way the water is going. <laughs> okay. Uh, my favorite valve is called a Jandy valve. And we get these valves from pool and spa suppliers. They don't make them for gray water. They make them for spa systems. But they work great for gray water systems. Because they have screws on the valve and I can take the whole plate off and clean it out if I need to. I can also change the direction that the valve sends the water to, however I want. Uh, here under a bathtub, they made a trap door, and there's the valve. This is at uh, a house I worked on, bathtub, the drain goes here to a three-way valve that is in a trap door next to the toilet and it sends the water to the landscape or the sewer. Uh, so uh, you need to think about everything if you can. So the, uh, the door on top of the valve access hole, which is next to the toilet, I made sure that the door or the roof to the valve box slopes like a roof. Why did I do that? Okay, I, I, I put the door or the top of the valve box, I slope it so liquids will drain off of it like rain will drain off of a roof. Why did I do this? Where, where is it located? I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you the answer, because I'm not sure how clear this is to you all. Um, unfortunately, men can be like dogs, and that they just pee all over the place, okay? And so, uh, I want it to be convenient and enjoyable to use this valve. And if I have to lift a lid full of puddled urine, I'm not going to touch it. So I make sure that everything drains off and it's nice to use. Where does it drain off? It drains to the floor. Ah, so. But I don't touch the floor. Okay. Was that a strange story? No. Okay. okay. All right. Now another important thing to remember about gray water is it's good to direct the gray water to multiple locations, not one location. So if I have a washing machine on one side of the house and a bathtub on the other side of the house, I don't like to combine the pipes. Instead, I want the pipes going to different parts of the yard. So this way, I never have too much water in one place. 
Let's say you have lots of people staying at your home and they're all taking baths multiple times a day. They're all doing laundry every day. 20 or more people. That could be too much water in one place. And the soil might go from being aerobic and oxygenated, which is healthy, to instead being anaerobic with no oxygen, which is stinky. Okay? So keeping the gray water distributed reduces the chance of problems. And we can split the flow even more times by having, here it splits at 50-50, and then some of the water comes out here, the other flow comes out here. Okay. The system with my washing machine and the different pipes does the same thing in a different way. Every time I do a load of wash, I send the gray water to a different place. I wonder how do you plan this amount of water with the um, pipe dimension, diameter? Uh-huh. So, come, oh, yeah. come, come si valuta questa suddivisione, questa rete di tubi? Uh, di distribuzione con il diametro dei tubi. We're going to uh, do that this afternoon. But uh, I follow code for the diameter of the pipe, building code. So usually if we have uh, a bathtub, it's a two, it's a 50 millimeter diameter pipe. Uh, 50. And when I come out with a 50 millimeter pipe, it, if it is 75 millimeters or bigger, it usually has toilet water in it, and I don't want it, okay? So then when I come to my first flow splitter, this is a flow splitter, it's a T that directs the water two ways, then I can get a reducing T, okay, which goes from 50 millimeters to uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 50 millimeters to, uh, I guess it would be 30, 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters. Okay? And it works good. Okay. This is an example of installing a system like this. So behind the wall is a washing machine. And we then come out to our first flow splitter. So 50% of the water here, 50% of the water there. Then we come to another flow splitter and split it 50-50. So we get 25% of that water here and 25% of that water here. And the other 25% here and here. So does that make sense? And I put all my pipes under raised pathways. So I can always find my pipe. It's never under plants. Okay. And by uh, 
So one of the basic water harvesting patterns I use is I like to have my, uh, my walkways, my pathways high because I don't grow anything there. And I drain the water to the basins. Okay? So this is where I put my pipes. And then I can outlet them here. Okay? And so I get rainwater and gray water. All waters. Okay? So, uh, uh, and when we are doing gravity fed systems, where we are using the free power of gravity to move the water, it's very important we keep the pipes as high as we can for as long as we can so that we can send the gray water further away. Okay. Let me give an example of that. So if, if this gray water pipe comes out a meter below the ground, I, I can't use the beneficial soil microorganisms, right? And if I have to maintain a continuous drop of two centimeters for every meter of length of pipe, by the time I get a fair distance away from the house, I'm at a meter and a quarter below the ground. I keep getting deeper. So I like to exit the house as high as possible, sometimes running the pipe along the outside wall. And I don't go into the soil until the last possible uh, location. Okay. All right. And then I can keep it high in the pathway. Um, this is my favorite tool to measure the slope of the pipe. Um, it's not in metric. It's in US English units. But you can probably find one in metric. So in English, in met, yeah, in English units, I want a quarter inch per foot slope. And this lists eighth of an inch, quarter inch, three eighths, half inch. So I can be exact. It's really good. So I'll pass these around if you want to see. But I could also use a regular level on the pipe and then just with a ruler or tape measure, measure two centimeters for every meter. Or I could take some coins or a piece of wood that's two centimeters big and tape it on here. So when I put this on, I just look for level every time. Okay? And I can get more of a slope, I just don't want too little. Okay? Okay, any questions on that? All right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. So I hear a lot of discussion. Okay, so the, it, it's a 2% slope is the minimum slope you need. In English units, that's a quarter inch drop per horizontal foot. In metric, it's a two centimeter drop per meter length. Okay? Is that what all the discussion was about? Yeah. Okay. Are you going to tell us later, by any chance, how to perhaps purify or cleanse uh, gray water in case it was held in a tank or uh, like uh, with plants or something? Io ho chiesto perché qualcuno l'ha chiesto se più tardi ci parlerà di come purificare o pulire le acque grigie, caso mai sono state raccolte in un bidone tenute un po' di tempo via, per esempio, con la fitodepurazione o qualcosa di questo genere. Per conservarle dopo la ma se già le metti nel serbatoio come acque grigie diventano acque nere sì, quindi sì. non le puoi usare quindi lo dovresti fare prima e poi metterle in un serbatoio if you're good I will show you ok um, and then uh, these pipes all outlet into sunken mulched basins ok Now, these T's, these flow splitters, I like to cut a hole in them at the top, not the bottom. The bottom, they don't work. At the top, so I can look inside. And I, if there is a clog, it is most likely going to happen here. So I can stick my finger in and get it out or blast it with a hose. Or just see, is the flow even, 50-50? I can also just look at the water coming out the pipe to see if it's even. But I like to put the flow splitters in a valve box so I can always find them and inspect them. Now, this system is very easy to use because when the water goes down the drain, it gets distributed as you want. You don't have to do anything. Okay? But, so it's very convenient for the homeowner, for the user. It is not convenient for the plumber or the installer. Because it takes a long time making sure your slope is just is right. Okay? So when when I put this system in, I dry fit the system. I connect it all with no glue. Okay? I make sure it's good. And uh um I'll check my levels, uh, and if all is good, then I, okay. I also dig my trenches deeper than necessary. And then, because it's easier to dig a lot at first, instead of having to take the pipe out and dig again. Then when uh, I fill in the trench with dirt, I fill in the sides, pack the dirt alongside the pipe, and I measure again. And if everything is good, then I bury it. Okay. Okay, so I will glue within uh, three, yeah, three meters of the house. For sure, I glue it. Because I don't want to risk the pipe coming apart and leaking water under the house. But with this black pipe that we use in the United States, it fits together very well without glue. So at my own house, I don't glue it 
when I'm three meters away from the house? Because maybe in the future I will change something and I can just disconnect it and reuse it. But if I'm doing a job for a client, I glue it because I don't want to risk it coming apart and them calling me to come fix it. Okay. okay. Here we can see uh, basin, basin, basin. Each one has a gray water pipe coming into it. And under the raised path, which is the light mulch, we have the valves and the pipes. Okay. And uh, here, you see that white nastiness right there? This is why I like to have the pipe outlet above the mulch, because I can see when somebody uses the wrong soap. it makes that white nastiness. So we could tell the client, hey, you're going to kill your soil and plants. Change your soap. And all's good. I also want, I like to be able to see the water coming out. Is it coming out or not? So I know if it's working or not. Okay. Here we have a pipe outletting into a mulch basin with an alluvial fan of lint, of fiber from people's clothes. Because there are a lot of people using this system. And so many people have uh, polyester or nylon clothes and they, that does not break down. It's not a natural fiber like cotton. So it does not degrade and water doesn't go through it. So when this happens, you need to occasionally collect the lint and throw it away or turn the mulch over. Okay. Or stop buying polyester clothes. <laughs> uh, so what I want to emphasize here is I don't, there's no system on earth that is maintenance free. But these systems I feel are low maintenance, but there still is maintenance. If you have a household using a little bit of water, you only have a few flow splits. If you have a house using a lot of water, there's more flow splits. And notice the pipe is under the raised pathway. The shaded area is a sunken basin. When you plant a plant, you can bring the pipe to the plant. But when the plant gets bigger, you can cut the pipe back and encourage the roots to grow further from the trunk. Okay. My friend who did the animation for this uh, and who wrote uh, this book, he says you can start with a very small basin and as the plant, as the tree gets bigger, you can increase the basin. I think that's horrible because nobody will increase the basin. You need to make the basin as big as it needs to be when you first dig the basin, okay? Uh, I try 
to provide half of a plant's water needs with gray water and half the plant's water needs with rainwater. Okay. We will talk about how you figure that out later. Okay, you all are going to do this today. The first step to harvesting gray water is try to figure out where is the gray water and where can you direct it. Okay, the next step is how big does your basin need to be to hold that water. Okay, so to do that, you need to dig an, a, uh, a small hole that is a shovel blade deep and a shovel blade wide. Uh, you need to dig a hole that is about uh, a little less than half a meter deep and wide. And then you fill it with water. You let all the water infiltrate into the soil. You fill it again and let all the water infiltrate into the soil. And then you fill it a third time and you put a stick in the side of the hole at the level of the water. And you look at your watch and you see how long does it take to, uh, where's that hand? Uh, hold on, just need to look at the metric. Uh, gallon per square foot. Okay, how long does it take to infiltrate a centimeter? How long in minutes does it take to infiltrate a centimeter? And that will tell you the perk rate, or the rate at which the water percolates or infiltrates into the soil. And then with that number, you can figure out how big to make your basin. We will do this after lunch. Okay. Um, uh, the reason we fill the hole three times is we are trying to mimic worst case scenario. Well, let's say it has rained for weeks and the soil is full of water and you've been doing laundry all day and now you're going to do more. Can the soil still absorb that water or not? Okay. Once you make your basin to collect the gray water, you can send the water into the basin different ways. This is my favorite. The pipe above the mulch so nothing grows into and clogs the pipe. But uh, some uh, health departments don't like that because they think someone might touch the gray water or drink the gray water. Okay. So they require that you cover the opening of the pipe so nobody can see it. I don't think that's necessary. Okay. Um, and an old way of doing it some people would take a bucket, turn it upside down so there's no bottom. They would cut a hole in the side and send the gray water into the bucket. Uh, the idea is this is full of air so no roots will grow into the pipe even though it's below the mulch. But this can be a problem because 
this part of the basin is lower than all the rest of the basin. And all your oil and soap will concentrate here. And it might seal the surface of the soil. And it will get stinky and mucky. And your paper system is open to being used by dogs. Questo sistema i cani possono bere quell'acqua, non so quanto pericoloso è per i cani. Is it dangerous for dogs? No. No? No. Um, but I train the dog not to go in the mulch basin. If, lots of wild dogs around here. Yeah, okay. So um, I will show you a system that works for bears and dogs later. Don't be screwed with the bears. Okay. So, uh, again, this is the system I like, but before this system, we had the bucket system. And it worked great for many years. But then my sister-in-law moved into the house and had a baby, and so a lot more laundry was being done. So a lot more gray water was going in. And it was too much, so the, uh, it started to seal up and get stinky. You see all the gross, mucky water in there? Ugh, it's awful. Okay. So what could we have done to reduce that problem? Yeah. We could have made more splits. Okay? That would have been great. But we, uh, we had the option of raising the pipe and making it above surface discharge. That worked too. So now the water could go to the whole basin, not just a small section of the basin. OK. All right. And now I'll tell you a strange story. So. I show this photograph a lot in my gray water talks. And I have gone to see people's home uh, where they installed this system. And I very often see the rock that is supposed to be on top of the bucket next to the bucket. And I see this bucket which in this photograph is just telling you what that bucket looks like underground. But I see this bucket sitting next to that bucket. And I ask the people, why is the rock there? And why do you have that bucket sitting there? And they say, because I saw that in your talk. <laughs> <laughs> But you don't need it. It's just, it's only for the photograph. Okay. Okay. This is a system you can use for dogs, for bears, for raccoons, uh, foxes, uh, and you can use for kitchen sink water and the diaper water. Okay. The poopy baby diapers. Okay. So we have the pipe coming into what we call an infiltration chamber. It's, it has no bottom. It has louvered sides with holes in the side. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's corrugated, so it's stronger. You can walk on top of it. So you can cover it with soil or mulch. And that's what it looks like covered. This is just an inspection pipe. But if you don't want to see it, you can cut it shorter and put a rock over it. So what's nice about this is dogs can't smell the food or whatever it goes down the drain. Um, and uh, 
if you have poopy diapers, nobody can access the poop. It's under the surface. Okay. Uh, but you have to buy plastic. So, um, any, any questions on this? Uh, oh, one other thing. So see, this is a big void space of air. So it is better than the, than the 100 millimeter diameter pipe with holes in it that is used for a septic leach field. Because those pipes are much more likely to clog with roots. It's, it's a smaller diameter. And you have to cover them in gravel. And it's horrible to dig in gravel. You don't need gravel with this. So roots start to grow up and then stop because they hit air. Okay? So this, this works good for many years. And in, in the United States, in Arizona, most septic leach fields use this system, not the pipe anymore, because it works better. You said that you put some soil on the top of this, mm -hmm. but you also said that on the surface we have more bacteria than on yes. under this. So I think this is less um, efficient of the uh -huh. other system for this. Yeah, you want to say that in Italian? Uh -huh. yeah. Praticamente gli ho detto che comunque lui ha sempre detto che i batteri superficiali sono molto più efficienti e in questo caso invece noi comunque abbiamo uno strato di suolo quindi lo scarico è comunque sotto quindi l'efficienza nella depurazione è inferiore. Yeah, so I prefer the basin but sometimes that's not possible. And you have an excellent point, which I will address in the next slide. <laughs> because I anticipated your question. <laughs> okay. So these chambers you can get in many different heights. And my favorite is uh, this one, which is only 20 centimeters tall, not a meter tall. So I can keep the water higher in the soil. Okay. Um, and here they are being installed. And uh, the other thing that's nice about this, if it's for your septic leach field, is you can plant fruit trees on the side. Not on top, but on the side. So you can irrigate your fruit trees with poop juice. Okay, which is full of fertility. Okay, so this is a way you can convert a septic system that is only draining wastewater into a septic system that reuses wastewater. Especially if you can raise the chamber higher in the soil profile. And here, you don't want to have to dig because of all the rock. So it's nice to have a shallower system. Okay. So did you see this is the website for this product? I, I don't know if there is an equivalent Italian company. Yeah, okay. Microphone. Uh, voglio capire se questo tipo di sistema si usa per uh, scarichi più grossi, perché non capisco se si può usare per una semplice lavatrice o un, una doccia. He's wondering if this kind of system is, is used for larger um, recycle of gray water, large quantity, or because it seems awfully big for just, let's say, a washing machine. Yeah. Yeah, um, 
And that all depends on the percolation rate of your soil and the volume of water going to the soil. And you would then size the number of these based on those two numbers. And we will do that exercise after lunch. But yes, this is used for bigger systems too. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, just a minute, just before your question. Let's, I want to ask a question. What if you have too much shower water going into your soil that has a very slow percolation rate and you have a small yard but you still want to harvest your gray water and let's say you have one of those high water use massaging shower heads. What can you do to enable you to harvest all of your gray water in the yard? Yeah, okay, so someone said change the shower head. So you can reduce the amount of water you send into the landscape. You can change the high water use shower head to a low water use shower head. And now there's less water you have to deal with. Okay. Un sistema molto simile a questo si usa in Italia, non so se lui lo conosce, le fosse IMOF, no? che servono per depurare l'acqua, hanno più o meno lo stesso, solo che sono chiuse, forate. Septic tanks? Yeah. So, the, the, the septic tank, I, I'll show you this system later, but the septic tank lets the solids drop out and the grease float to the top and then the clearer liquids come out. And with a septic system, the clearer water that comes out would go into this. Okay? So you can use this with a septic. But I find with, mo with gray water systems, the septic is a problem because it lets the water sit and oftentimes turn into black water. But with a black water system, a septic can be good. But they're, they're two different waters. Okay. This is looking inside this infiltration chamber. And that is not water. That is anaerobic soil. And when we dug it, you can see it's black. The problem with this system is people never did the calculation to figure out how much chamber they should have for their gray water discharge. So one day when it was rainy weather and the soil was already wet, the family decided to do a lot of laundry in one day and it overloaded the soil and it became anaerobic and when soil becomes anaerobic the rate at which the water infiltrates is dramatically reduced and it creates this slick slime layer so water filled up the chamber and backed up the pipe. So the solution was to do what they should have done in the first place. And that is size the chambers to the correct volume for the percolate of the soil. So they realized they needed two more chambers. 
So they added those, and everything's worked great. Uh, one other thing, it's good to put the gray water into not just one end, but to split the flow to direct the gray water into multiple ends. Otherwise, there is a risk that the soil will go anaerobic where it comes in and slowly grow that way. Okay. okay. <laughs> so now I'm going to shift to a different system. Everything I've talked about up until now has used gravity to move the water. Okay? And uh, now I'm going to talk about a system that uses the pump of the washing machine to have a pressurized system. Okay? This only works for washing machines. Okay? But the advantage of it is you can move water uphill or to a place higher than the washing machine. Okay? But it also requires some hard to find parts. Okay? And uh, I don't know how easy or difficult it is in Italy, but I bet it's difficult. So you can get these parts at www.clearwatersolutions.com. And you can buy a kit that has all the parts. You can buy it online. But keep in mind, there's a business opportunity. <laughs> if you like this system, maybe you could make it available in Italy on a website that's all in Italian. <laughs> OK. Um, all right. An adva another advantage of this system is it's after you install one system, Every system after that is quick to install. So it's convenient for the installer as well as the user. Your, your first installation is slow with any system. Okay. All right, so here's how it works. The pump in the washing machine pumps the water out to a three-way valve that lets you send the water to the sewer or to the landscape. We typically use rigid PVC pipe here inside the house that then goes to a one-way vent. But once we go to the yard, we switch to flexible <laughs> HDPE irrigation line that is 25 millimeters in diameter. Okay. Could you tell us what HDP stands for? Your kids are that is a great question. Plastic. It's a type of plastic and I don't recall the ex Let me let me get Let me get that for you at the break cuz I have to Oh, you know? Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. All right. I was having a senior moment. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, I didn't convert to. Metric. Okay, so there are some limitations with this system. First, 
you don't want to pump the water higher than one meter above the washing machine. Maybe you can do more, but you risk burning out the pump. Okay? Second, you don't want more than uh, 35 meters. Uh, 35 meters? Yeah, 35 meters of length of 25 millimeter irrigation tubing. Because if you have more than that, there's uh, too much surface friction, you're pumping the water too far, and you might burn out the pump. Okay. And uh, let's see. Do, 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 don't need that. Um, okay. When you install the system, Oh, sorry, let me... Um, so this system I'm talking about now is called a laundry to landscape. or L2L -L system. You can search that online for more videos. But the best one is by uh, Art Ludwig, who wrote this book. And you can get his information at Oasis Design Dot net. Okay. Um, all right. So we need to have a vent located at the highest point of the plumbing. And that vent comes after the three way valve. Okay. You can use what we call an auto vent that lets uh, air um, come into the system, but no air out. Or you can do a pipe that goes up high enough so no water comes out. How high do you make it? Well, run the system, and if water squirts out, make it higher until no more water comes out. Or you can put a section of pipe with a one-way check valve. Uh, if you use all HDPE pipe, it's less toxic than PVC. PVC is not toxic to use, but it's toxic to manufacture. Very toxic. Okay. So, um, but here, three-way valve lets you send water to sewer or landscape. Okay. Uh, these are just examples of an installation. Washing machine water to sewer or landscape. Okay. The water, the pipe comes outside the wall to the vent stack. It's best to have the vent outside because if something goes wrong, water leaks outside, not inside the house. not going to talk about that. Don't. Well, okay. The, yeah. Okay. Here we have a washing machine. Three-way valve. Water goes to the landscape or the sewer. 
comes out the window, over the wall, and to the garden. They have a one-way check valve. The only reason they need this is because they send the water uphill after the valve. And uh, you don't want water to come back into the machine after you do the wash. But if this pipe were to go downhill after the valve, you don't need this. They are in a climate with a very cold winter. So they drain the pipe before winter and just use the sewer in winter. Not going to look at that. We don't need that. Okay. How are you guys doing? Do you need a break? Or are we okay? Do you need a break? No? Okay. All right. So uh, there are different ways you can outlet the water from the system. The simplest is just drill a hole in the irrigation tube. Or you can put a uh, barbed fitting, okay, which you can then slide up or down. Uh, or you have a uh, barbed fitting with a, a valve. This is the easiest to work with, but more expensive. When you make the hole, uh, I don't know what it is in metric. Um, okay. But uh, we do a 732nd inch hole. That is the same size as a goof plug for a drip irrigation system. So if you mess up, you can plug it. If you make a mistake, you can plug it. Okay. Um, if you point, if you make the hole on the bottom, uh, the water does not spray, but it's more likely to clog with roots growing in it. So making the hole in the side is better. Okay. Uh, do I want to show that? Hmm. Okay. In uh, in California, you have to have your emitters, your outlets, covered. But interestingly, right across the border in Arizona, you don't. And both systems work. OK. So here, if we had the hole, you can take a planter pot, put it upside down on top of the hole, and then it's legal in California. OK? But in Arizona, you don't need this. Why? OK. So if you try to make this legal in Italy, and your authorities are concerned that someone will touch the water, you can talk to them about this option. OK. Um, here we have the barbed fitting. You can either just go right to the mulch, or in California, put it in a pot with no bottom. There's no bottom to the pot, so it infiltrates into the soil. If too much water comes out, you can lift the valve up to lessen the water coming out.
This I like best. But instead of getting the green color, I like the purple color. <laughs> because purple means reclaimed water, which it's treated wastewater. And that's more like what gray water is. OK. So you can open or close the valve to adjust how much water you want to come out. And then at the very end of your line, you have your washing machine and the irrigation line. You always have it open. Don't do that. Always have it open. So if a lot of lint or paper clips or bubble gum gets into the pipe from because it was in somebody's pocket, it won't clog the system. It can instead shoot out. Okay. But you, if here's the line, and there's the opening at the very end. If I had like a bush here, I would tie the open end up to the bush. Because I need this high enough that no water comes out of it when the system in the landscape is working correctly. It's only if these get clogged that water can sh shoot out. All right? Okay. But not too high. How high is that? Uh, I will only have it about this high <laughs> off the ground, and I will test it. Yeah. So I always make it extra long when I start, and then I can cut it back after I test it. Okay. All right. OK, so keep in mind, the more emitters you have in the line, the less pressure. The fewer emitters, the more pressure you have. Um, and as you get further away from the washing machine, your uh, pressure will be reduced. So if you have a valve, you can close it more here and open it more here. If you go downhill, it, you will keep the same pressure, more or less, if it's a gradual slope. But if you go from level to steep to level, the most pressure will be at the bottom of the hill. Okay. So you need to adjust your valves accordingly. So you just run the water through the system, see how much comes out each emitter, and adjust as necessary. Nice. OK, if you go uphill, you might have no pressure. So to do this, you run solid line uphill with no emitters, and then come downhill with your emitters.
Okay, more information there and more information there. <laughs> okay. Um, so, just a quick review. Everything I showed you, except for the laundry to landscape, was a gravity-fed system. Again, I prefer that because it always works as long as there's gravity. And it's a cheaper system. Okay? There's fewer parts. There's less maintenance. Okay? Um, if we have a pump, every pumped system, except for the laundry to landscape, that I have experienced, the pump never lasts longer than three years. And I've talked to all the manufacturers and distributors of these systems, and I asked them, what is the longest life you have for your pump? Three years. And it's hundreds of dollars for the pump. Plus, you need to power the pump with electricity. OK? Why do that? OK? Um, all right. The, uh, so I am trying, I focus on the, what I find to be the cheapest, most effective, easiest systems. The branch drain system can work for any gray water system if you have enough slope. The laundry to landscape system only works for washing machines. All right. OK, so with that, let's take another short break. And then we'll talk about kitchen sink systems after the break. OK? Because lunch is at 10, 1.30, right? Half an hour break now? No, I mean, half an hour when we left lunch. lunch. So yeah, so let's just do 10 minute break, real short. Stretch your legs, coffee. Yeah.